Kyle O'Reilly versus John Moxley. What a great match. This match was awesome. Okay, don't get me wrong. Yes. This match was quite great. I'm taking nothing away from these men. But the highlight of this entire episode was William Regal. The glee in his voice <laughs> oh, yeah. when Moxley hit a Cornish hype. Yes. So as I noted on uh, Twitter, I have not heard the term Cornish hype since the year 2001. I went down to King of the Indies, and uh, and I was hanging out with Ed Moretti and uh, um, Doug Williams. And uh, I think it was Doug Williams. Might have been the person. He is English. Yeah. But I can't remember how it how it came about. But, you know, one of them, I think it was Doug Williams had mentioned a, a Cornish hype. And then uh, I think Ed was talking to me about it later. And I could not fucking remember the words Cornish hype. I kept calling it a corning hash all weekend. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, I'll never forget this, the corning hash. And, uh, you know, for years, anytime I saw Ed, he would laugh about the corning hash, the fucking Cornish hype. And... Uh, Fuck. When, when, I think it was, was it Moxley that hit it? Moxley hit it. Yeah, Moxley hit it. And fucking Regal jumps out of his seat and he goes, <laughs> Cornish hype! He was so fucking excited so to happy. see a fucking Cornish hype. At this very basic fundamental throw. I laughed. It's called a whizzer and amateur. It's just an overhook. It's an overhook and a leg sweep and a throw forward. It's a whizzer in wrestling. I'm sure this thing is very similar in judo. It's. It is a judo throw, yes. Yeah. So it, but, but in wrestling, it's the fucking Cornish hype. Cornish hype. So the match was also great. It's super intense. It's super physical. Dude, there's some cool shit in this match. Moxley, Moxley's on the top rope, and uh, and he applies a Darce choke. <laughs> okay, yes. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing a Darce choke on the top rope for? And then I figured it out. But he has decided... I'm going to see if I can do a Darce choke into a suplex, okay? <laughs> now, I'm not sure you can pull this off on the mat because a Darce is like, uh, you know, it's applied at like a 90-degree angle. So I was trying to figure out if you could actually do it standing on the mat. But what we do know is you can do it off the middle rope to some bl poor bloke on the top rope. He fucking puts this guy in a Darce, and then as he's choking him, he fucking superplexes him off the top. That move was awesome. Tony Khan is actually the one who pointed this out. There's a point in this match where Moxley goes for a gotch pile driver. But as he does that, as he grips his hands, his hands are in perfect position for O'Reilly to grab the arms and transition right to an arm bar. That's yes. how he escapes. So the next time Moxley goes for a pile driver, he does these standard grip and thus the arm bar counter won't work and Moxley hits the move instead. And uh, Moxley gets the bulldog choke and O'Reilly is literally going red in this choke. But then instead of finishing him off that way, Moxley releases it. Hits a series of knees, the Death Rider, and he wins. So he is he will be fighting for the interim AEW title, AEW title at Forbidden Door. Oh, this match was awesome. Yeah. What a great match. You know, some people were complaining about Kyle O'Reilly and being in the match and everything like that, but I don't want to hear it. He won the Battle Royal. He ran through all those guys. It's fine. A great wrestler. They had yeah. a great match. And, uh, you know, that's one of those things where... You know, there's nothing wrong every now and then with, with somebody who is not in contention. Like, having a great match and and being put in that position, you don't expect it. It's something different. I like this a lot, and I love the match, and John Moxley facing the winner of Tanahashi and Goto. <laughs> Which is kind of the same thing. I think we all know who's going to win that one. I sure hope so, dude. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a swerve? It'd be a fucking swerve, all right. Thinking about that. And I've been seeing a lot of swerves of late, so. Yeah. Luckily, this would require both Ghetto and Tony Khan deciding to do a swerve. Old yeah. Excalibur. We've got heat with him. <laughs> I was clearly joking when I said they sped up his voice. I had nothing to do with this, Mr. Caliber. <laughs> oh, now you have to apologize. His name is not Excalibur. His first <laughs> yeah. name isn't Xavier. I like Excalibur. He used to be <laughs> yeah. a Caliber. If anything ever happens, like AW goes under or whatever. You know, they always have those those uh, those commercials about drugs, and they have that guy that reads the list of side effects. Yes. One out there, I, I, it's potentially lethal taint fungus. <laughs> that would certainly be bad. And I am not exaggerating that at all. <laughs> My point all is, is they... I will never take this drug under any circumstances. Potentially lethal taint fungus, <laughs> lol. Lol. I hate him. 
If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.